Hey guys, this is Janine from Pangolin. Welcome back to my Lightroom course for wildlife photographers. Today I want to talk to you about how to save or export your image in Lightroom. Let's get started. If you haven't got any photographs yet, please go onto our homepage, sign up for the Wildlife Photography Lightroom course and you'll get all my images to follow me along step by step. So in previous modules of this Lightroom course, we've learned how to file, organize and edit our images. A lot of photographers have the question how to save the image after they have edited it. The beauty in Lightroom is that there is no saving involved at all. So you can't forget it and lose your progress by accident either. Everything you do step by step is recorded in our history which then is written into a text file and that text file can be deciphered by your catalog. So the key to keeping your images safe is your Lightroom catalog. Remember that you can back up your Lightroom on a regular basis, and that you can even drag and copy the file onto a different hard drive if you want to keep a second copy of it. If you need more information with that regard, check out my model with regards to the Lightroom structure. In the previous modules, we have edited this image and implemented all these changes, including keywording our photograph, as well as placing it into a collection. So how are we going to save it now? If we press I, we will see that it is still in a raw format form. And raw formats cannot be used to be placed on social media, sent by email, or to print in any form. We're going to have to make it a JPEG or a TIFF file, for instance, to make any further use of it. If you actually do need a different file format because you need to use the image, you will export it rather than save it as a JPEG or a TIFF. Let me show you. By right clicking on the image, you can go to export. Alternatively, you can go into your drop down menu at the top and go to file export. This will open an export window for you that I quickly want to talk you through. Number one, we need to choose an export location. I like to export it to a specific folder, not just to the desktop in general. So you can choose wherever you would like to place your photograph. On top of that, you can place a subfolder. So if you have a photography folder and you're now making a separate folder for your trip, you can place it into a subfolder called, for instance, Joby 2020. You can add it to another catalog straight away if you're working on separate catalogs, or you can just leave it as that. Number two, you're going to have to name your files. You can leave it as it was before, or you can give it a custom name. So while I don't care much for renaming my raw files because it doesn't really matter, they're in my hands on my hard drive. I really like renaming my JPEGs because often you happen to send them out or share them with third parties and I would like them to know that it is my image. It will then count them through starting from the number one. It is not a video, so this is not applicable for us at the moment. But then we go to file settings. We need to choose what type of file we want to export it as. A DNG is another raw format that it's not going to work for us if we want to make use of it with social media. Therefore, we need to export it as a JPEG. Some printers will ask you to export it as a TIFF because it is a bigger file. You can then choose your color space. Remember that you can also choose your color space on your camera body. And if you have shot an sRGB, you will not be able to turn it into Adobe RGB because Adobe RGB has the widest set of information. And because of that, I like to use Adobe RGB. It gives me all the freedom in the world. You choose the quality and if need be, because you want to 
make it smaller, you can limit your file size to a certain number in order to, for instance, send it by email. But then there is a separate tab for image sizing. Sometimes you have to resize your image. I tend to choose a resolution of 300 pixels per inch. That is a pretty good quality for an image. And if you, for instance, participate in a competition, you will very often be asked to resize your image to a specific format of having a certain amount of pixels per width or height or on the long edge or the short edge of your photograph. Same holds when you use social media a lot. Social media cannot upload a full-sized image to their platforms, so they tend to compress it for you, but unfortunately not always in the most favorable way. So if you Google and find out which specific file size works for which social media platform, you can compress it right here and there, and Lightroom will make a much better job of it. You can sharpen afterwards, but if you've watched my editing module, you'll see that we already sharpen very precisely and don't need to necessarily sharpen any further. Then you can choose which part of your metadata will actually be implemented into your photograph. If you've added metadata either manually here on the right hand side under your library or upon import, then you can make sure which part of the metadata you would like to share. If you want to learn more about how to add your metadata upon import, check out my import module. It will help you along the way. Last but not least, you can put a watermark on your image. You can choose any type of watermark you want. It is not entirely intuitive. Those are all presets that I have made for myself. And if you're more interested, check out my module on watermark presets to learn how to make your life easier when it comes to watermarks in Lightroom. At the end, you have to choose whether you want your image opened after exporting it or not. I usually do nothing. And then you press export. You will see a little export mark coming here on the top and as soon as it's gone it will be in the file that you chose. The same way you can also export bulk. If you go into your matrix and you've edited all these images you could export them all together by pressing file and export. But please remember that you cannot choose individual watermark locations if you export in bulk. Also make sure that you really know where you place these images. Are you going to place them on another external hard drive, the same external hard drive, or your computer? And what organizational structure are you going to keep for those JPEGs? It is a big question to ask yourself, and my best advice would be not to export unless you really, really need your image, because the moment you export is the first time you're actually creating a duplicate of your file. Previously, we always had our raw file with the XMP text file that was read by our catalog, displaying our changes perfectly. As soon as we export it, these are both put together and a new file is created taking up more memory space. I generally place them on my computer because I'm busy doing something at that moment with that image and I tend to clean up after my JPEGs on a regular basis, deleting them again. You do not need them on your computer because all your beautiful images are actually within your Lightroom library. So whenever you need them, you can export them again or you can simply show your best of pictures in a collection that you have created for these purposes. I, for instance, have a Cuba collection of my private Cuba holiday, having my best of pictures in here, and I can show them to you at any given time without me needing my hard drive with me. So I can show you all of these images without taking up extra space on my computer. I can even create a slideshow with them, and there is no need for me to export them at this stage. So to sum it all up, you don't need to save your images, 
make sure you back up your catalog because your catalog is your key to read the images and all the changes made. And at the end, export them when you have a use for it and maybe even delete it after that again. I hope this made sense to you. It's a bit of a different workflow. If you want to learn more about how to set up watermark presets for your exported images, check out my other module. I hope to see you there. Bye-bye.